Uh, one more kind of big ish picture thing, but specific to this year, uh, I wanted to get out of here because we're getting a considerable amount, Cody, of Parker Meadows hype. Now, mm. I've always loved his profile. I, I love, you know, the great athlete in the outfield and around the bases and, you know, oh man, if the, if the bat could ever get going and to his credit, he got it going. He projects to be an opening day starter in major league baseball. Awesome. And we rave about the defense. I, I keep telling myself, is it possible? Like, is this a, is this a gold glove finalist here that we're like, you know, about to watch? And to me, that seems in the realm of possibility. But he is kind of, in my opinion, like, make a player the 2024 Detroit Tigers. It's Parker Meadows. It took a while to get here. You're excited as hell about it. Uh, on the field, you're pretty confident, like the ball field. And in the batter's box, you're still kind of waiting to, and hoping that it's going to work out. You know, I, I hope that analogy kind of tracks a little bit. Because the Parker Meadows thing is exciting, but I... I'd be lying to, to to tell you, Cody, if it's not kind of scary, because we're talking ourselves into a lot, just like, again, guilty as charged of doing it. But we're talking ourselves into a lot for him, kind of at the same rate that we are the success that this team can have in 2024. I think they align yeah. well. Yeah, I don't, I don't think some of the question marks around Meadows are lost on the Tigers' decision makers. You see just this huge upside and ceiling that he has. Parker's one of my favorite guys in this clubhouse to cover. Great personality. Obviously a ton of fun to watch. I think I've probably said it before. Sometimes we're probably treating him as too much of a sure thing. The defense is really good, but do you know how hard it is to be actually a plus center fielder at the major league level? I think the best defender I've still seen is Derek Hill. Derek Hill in his short time in the major leagues, I think was negative defensive runs saved. And the reason, because in center field, you were, or compared to every other center fielder in the league. Every team thinks they have a tremendous center fielder. So to actually be a gold glove center fielder, you have to be the best of the best. Every team's best athlete is in center field. Okay, so you, you got to trump all these other guys. Hard to do. You could be negative defensive run saved and still be a heck of a defender in center field. So it's it's that's a lot to wrap your mind around. At the plate, Look, the guy's got some some raw power. He's obviously made a ton of progress as a hitter. Uh, but we talk a lot about prospect lists. Fangraphs just put out theirs. I think their scouting reports are probably the best of the industry. And, you know, it's pretty real. It says he's a little too long and vulnerable against up and away fastballs to project sustained offensive performance at this level. Talks about some of his other weaknesses, righty change-ups, uh, struggles with soft away. Either you're getting him out or limiting his raw power. Lacks the plus offensive attribute of an impact everyday player. He's a competent and dangerous enough left-handed hitter to project as a complementary regular, the lefty half of a center field platoon. That's more pessimistic than probably what the average Tigers fan thinks Parker Meadows has. And I think there's upside for him to be better than that, but the scouting report, kind of a raw and realistic look at, you know, probably the most likely scenario for Parker Meadows' career. And he's really young. So what if he struggles out of the gate this year? And how does that impact the rest of the team? Could actually have a ton of ripple effects. Or let's just say he gets hurt. So he pulls a hammy because he's a, a center fielder. Who plays center field? What are we doing there? It's one of the, the, the most important questions surrounding this roster right now. Yeah. And, you know, you're not either one of the guys that you project to be in the corner. You're not really, you're not putting them, well, Outside of Riley, obviously, because that's the natural inclination. But are you – that's another interesting, like, follow-up question is, like, how, over under innings at center for Riley. And that will yeah. that, and, and that will probably be directly related to the health and bat performance of a Parker Meadows. Because it's yeah. one of those things that we – at this time last year, we were talking about, man, if he could – him being Parker. If he could get it going, like, that solves a lot of issues. And – to the extent that he that could have happened last year, it did. Now it's a whole nother animal, and, and and the opposite is true. If he doesn't get it going offensively, then that that's good. That's one problem that causes about four more. Yeah, and I think AJ Hinch has already said this, talking about the construction of the roster. I have to be prepared for every scenario. 
So the Tigers are thinking about all of this, and I don't think they know what the over-under on Riley in center field is. They have a tough decision to make there. I think in an ideal world, you post him up in the outfield corners, and you say, that's it, he's done in center. But you kind of can't do that, because you kind of need a little insurance for Parker Meadows. And even then, they're debating, okay, do we just stick Riley in right field and let him be great there? But then you have to move Carpenter to left field where he's not as good. But do you shift them both around? Is that good for either young player? If you don't want Riley in center and something happens with Meadows, you're probably looking at like Matt Veerling, which then messes up your plan at third base, <laughs> which then impacts the back into the roster. Because I made the case last week. I think you got to take Justin Henry Malloy. I still kind of feel that way. But early vibes, Jahan's got an uphill battle. I think for this scenario we just outlined, Tigers are going to lean toward another player who can play the infield, probably a right-handed bat. So we're talking Ryan Kreidler, the dark horse, Eddie's Leonard, and new signing Keston Hira. Um, among the candidates, there are more. Andre Lipschitz, Winslow Perez, uh, probably a couple guys I'm not even thinking of right now. Uh, but I think that's that's probably the biggest roster battle, and Akil Badu too. So you have Jahan and Badu. Badu hits left-handed. Like you can see a role for him, but eh. Malloy I think is the most intriguing offensively. The Fangraph scouting report kind of negative on him. Thinks his plate discipline won't translate as well because pitchers are going to attack him in the zone. Thinks he'll whiff in the zone. That was enlightening to read. But in terms of getting anyone at bats, probably what you need is a right-handed infielder. So uh, th th those are some questions we're going to be wrestling with for the next few weeks here.